Welcome back to Horrifying Stories. This week's episode contains graphic images of how two college friends were attacked head on by a grizzly bear. This is their horrifying story. Viewer discretion is advised. Shoshone National Forest, America's first national forest located in northwestern Wyoming. The 2.4 million acres of land offer spectacular views of rugged mountains, glaciers, rivers, plateaus, and exceptional wildlife watching and hunting. It provides a beautiful escape from the concrete jungle to get away from its hustle and bustle and simply tune in with nature. One of the popular activities in the area is hunting, as it has been widely known for the abundance and variety of its wildlife. Its thick forest is teeming with big game animals such as elk, moose, deer, bighorn sheep, goats, antelope, black bear, and grizzly bears. Needless to say, this national forest attracts hunters from all levels. It was that time of the year, October 15, 2022, for college wrestlers decided to visit Shoshone National Forest to go shed hunting. Shed hunting is the gathering of shed antlers in the wild. Every year, male members of North America's deer family, female caribou, elks, and reindeers grow a new pair of antlers each spring after shedding them during winter months. And so, the four friends went on an expedition to look for shed antlers along the Bobcat Hulihan Trail in Shoshone National Forest. The four friends were Braden Lowry, Kendall Cummings, Orrin Jackson, and August Harrison. The four swept through the trail, checking on every side for any antlers, picking each one up as they went along, and at the same time enjoying each other's company. Towards the end of the day, the friends decided to start heading back to their truck. They agreed to split up in pairs with Jackson and Harrison going on the direct path of the trail going to their vehicle, while Lowry and Cummings went on a separate route through the forest. Now, as mentioned earlier, Shoshone National Forest is home to black bears and grizzly bears, so the four college students each brought with them bear sprays for protection. As Lowry and Cummings were navigating the thick forest, they found plenty of grizzly bear signs, and they were very much aware of their presence in the area. This was totally not new to them, they already had previous bear encounters. In those instances, they were able to smoothly grace through without any incidents, so they knew that they just needed to be really careful of their every move. They continued on hiking towards where they parked their truck, and at the same time, continued looking for shed antlers. After a while, they found themselves in an area full of fresh bear scat. And just as Lowry expressed his concern, suddenly, a female bear appeared charging from the woods, moving fast towards their direction. Before they could even grab their bear sprays, it tackled Lowry head-on and was aiming for his head. Lowry's first instinct was to protect his head, so he threw his arms up to cover his face. Completely fixated on attacking its prey, the bear grabbed him by his arms and started to shake and toss him around. Lowry's arms eventually ended up broken in multiple areas. Just 10 yards from where they were, Cummings witnessed the horrible and horrifying attack. Everything the bear was doing to his friend was unfolding right before his very eyes. He was yelling and throwing rocks at the bear, trying to get it off of his dear friend, but the bear remained unbothered. During that time, he had two options. To run away and save his own life at the expense of his friend's life, or to risk it and save his friend, but throwing himself into equal danger. Choosing the latter would be heroic, but the prior would have still been justifiable. But Cummings did the unthinkable. Risking his very own life, he jumped on the bear, and with all his might, pulled the bear's ears and face, trying to get the bear off of Lowry. He succeeded in getting the bear to let go of Lowry. However, there was one problem. The bear now turned towards Cummings, and suddenly shifted its attention on him. Upon seeing this, Cummings immediately tried to run away, but the bear was unbelievably fast, and in a matter of seconds, it quickly caught up on him. The bear knocked him to the ground, and pushed him against a tree and pinned him. The bear mercilessly attacked him and ripped his face. In a later interview, Cummings said he could even hear the bear's teeth hit his skull, and could feel when it bites down on his bones and hear his bones crunch. As he struggled and fought for his life, he was trying to put his arms inside the bear's mouth so he could protect his neck and face. And unexpectedly, the bear suddenly let go of him and just slowly moved away. 
When he was free from the bear's mouth, all he ever thought about was his friend's condition. Not minding his own injuries and safety, he called on Lowry and was trying to check on him. But as he was calling Lowry, the bear heard him, circled around him, and then began attacking him again. While the bear was still attacking Cummings, Lowry tried to gather himself up, got up on his feet, and ran towards a hill where he could catch a mobile signal. He immediately called 911, reported the incident, and asked for assistance as fast as possible. On the hill overlooking the trail, he also caught sight of their two other friends who were walking on the other trail, just below where they were. Relieved yet desperate, he shouted for help, and told them that a bear attacked them and is still attacking Cummings. He started to fear that his dear friend who just saved his life, might be dead by now. Upon hearing this, Harrison quickly went running up the hill to find Cummings. He was unarmed, except for the bear spray. Just like Cummings, by rushing to the scene, he knew he was putting himself in danger, but he was determined to help his friend. And four minutes into their search, to their surprise, they saw Cummings emerge from the woods, drenched in blood. Right before their eyes, they saw for themselves how absolutely horrifying that bear encounter had been. Cummings' face was brutally ripped open. It was so bad that he could feel the wind blowing through his skull and was in excruciating pain. The two badly injured friends were in desperate condition, they needed to get help as soon as possible. Worried for their friends and knowing they needed immediate medical attention, Jackson and Harrison stepped in and assisted their friends as they headed back to the trailhead. Meanwhile, Park County Search and Rescue, along with the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, sent teams to rescue them. As they reached the trailhead, and upon initial assessment of Cummings' life-threatening situation, rescue teams called in a rescue helicopter to take Cummings. He was finally airlifted to St. Vincent Healthcare in Billings, Montana. Shortly after, Lowry was also transported by an ambulance to the same hospital. Lowry sustained compound fractures to his left arm, major lacerations to his back, shoulders, right leg, and thigh. Meanwhile, Cummings had to endure 60 staples in his head, undergo plastic surgery for his facial lacerations, and multiple stitches on both his hands and legs. For the two young wrestlers, there was absolutely no doubt about it. It was a miracle that they were able to survive that horrific attack. However, they won't be able to wrestle for a while until they fully recover. Yet despite all their injuries, Cummings and Lowry already made up their minds to continue their wrestling career. In fact, both of them can't wait to return to practice as soon as they secure the necessary medical clearance. Officials have stated that there has been an abundance of bear activity in the area. Landowners and hunters reported that there may be six to ten different bears moving between agricultural fields and low elevation slopes within the vicinity. Authorities are now closely monitoring their movement to prevent further incidents as they continue to prioritize the safety and the welfare of the people. For Lowry and Cummings, the horrifying incident did not change any of their interests. Lowry even stated that he will definitely be back to the mountains as soon as he can. The mountains have been his happy place and will continue to be, so giving up shed hunting was not an option. Their common love and interest for wrestling have made these college friends a band of brothers. The kind of brotherhood who's got each other's backs, and shed hunting together, was simply another bonding moment for them. Yet on that fateful day, after the terrifying ordeal, a different kind of bond sealed this band of brothers. Thank you for making it this far. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. This means a lot to us. Again, thank you, and see you in the next one.